my video um, from last month. My temper flares up a lot. I've been throwing self-care to the side because I feel so lethargic and I'm so quick to anger. The weight loss world, that's another thing I've put on the back burner and I'm pretty sure I've gained weight. I haven't weighed myself in the last couple of weeks but yeah I'm pretty sure I gained weight and uh, I've been breaking out and just getting pains everywhere. My tendonitis is going to be two months that I haven't eaten any meat on the 6th of May and I feel really good about that. I've had a few cravings here and there and with the stress I wanted to give in. Going through all these other things with friends, family, too many issues to count, uh, having issues with uh, the, my my family members that are staying with us sometimes and then my other family and Matt's family and it's just it's all been too much and like Matt and I have been like at each other's throats on and off and uh, mainly because I like try and say something to the guy and then he doesn't hear me or he he like tunes me out and I just, I feel so ignored most of the time and I don't like that feeling. And I feel that way with some of my friends too, like, they'll be like, so what's up, how have you been? And then I'll tell them either in a text or on Facebook or in person and then I'll go to tell them about it later and I'll tell them that I'm feeling much better and they'll be like, oh, I didn't know that, I'm so sorry you were feeling that way. Oh my freaking god, like, if you're going to ask me what I said or how I'm feeling, like, Matt will be like, what? What did you say? And then I'll repeat myself and he'll be like, what? Like, I'm like, oh my god. So anyway, there's just a lot of shit going on. And sure, you can call it a first world problem, but you know what? It's affecting me. I'm just so quick to anger at everything. I've like I've always had a temper, but it's it's insane now. Like this is a terrible temper. I barely get frustrated with honesty. There was even a day when she woke us up at five five thirty. Actually, it was like three days in a row, and uh, I'm like, oh my god. She's not eating her breakfast barely, and like I'm exhausted at this point, and I'm just like, honesty, please eat. And then I was just like, you know what? I turned around, turned away from her. She's like sitting here, and uh, I just turn away from her, and I'm like, free this. If she's not going to eat, I am just not going to feed her because I can't take this puree bullshit anymore. I'd rather just give her the foods and hopefully she eats enough. I was ready to throw in the towel with purees because of a few days of fussiness. Obviously she had to adjust to the change. It's been like a couple of weeks since we've been adding in a lot more purees. So it's a bunch of new textures and she just likes biting on or gnawing on the full thing and then she can take off as much as she wants to like suck on or bite and chew or swallow, you know, like with banana and mango, it's really easy for her to do that. Mmm, mango is delicious. Look at you! I cut up the middle, which is the pit, and it's got <coughs> mango on it, and then I've got a couple of mango fingers there for her as well. And she is just loving it. Um, I actually started taking video because she had the pit right up to her mouth. Like, this girl learns really fast. And she's pretty dexterous. Like, look at her just grabbing that thing. 
And then, like, the fingers she had up to her mouth, too. But now she's really obsessed with playing with that pit. It's slippery, but... Look at that. Mmm. Delicious. 2008, when I went through a really big depression, um, when I was in high school, when I was in grade 10, I would have been like 2002, 2003 or something like that. I went through a big depression then as well. But 2008 really was really bad. I feel myself there again. And the weight gain comes along with it. And feelings of self-doubt and low self-worth. And just everything goes with it. My blood pressure was going down. And then with all the new stressors and the old stressors coming back to bite me in the arse, it started crawling back up. The highest when I went to the grocery store and tested my blood pressure was 150 over 93. I've never had anything over 145, I believe, was my highest. That is scaring me, but I still can't seem to control my binge eating. Um, I'm just not ready to. It It's comforting. It feels safe. I have this weird reddish, purple, bluish pimple thing in my on my left thigh. I swear to God, my left side is going down the shitter. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm misaligned. We don't have the money for me to go to a chiropractor or a physiotherapist right now. I just wish I could go somewhere where it was covered. But because Matt has coverage, they want us to pay the 20%. And we just don't even have that 20% right now. Like my left side, that's where my tendonitis is. Um, that's where I tend to have foot pain. Um, now I have this, this uh, whatever the frig you want to call it. Started out as red with a small, small white, like, s sphere in there. And then it, the white sphere just kind of like disappeared and then it, it got bigger and it was still, it went from red and purple was in there and then blue. And then next thing you know, all of a sudden there was like a little black dot at the tip of that and I'm like, oh my god, of course I'm looking up stuff on the internet. It's like saying cancer and then saying it could be a boil that usually happens in obese people and like, oh my god seriously so I was like and then it started shrinking again and it's purple and red and now I see that the, the white little um, sphere is back I don't know what to do like I really need to make a doctor's appointment with all these things I'm feeling but every time I go there he acts like there's nothing wrong with me. He's like, oh, there's nothing wrong. You're going to be just fine. Uh, oh, like when I went there and I was telling him about the burning sensation right here in my, around my heart, he's like, oh, that's nothing. Except, yeah, my blood pressure is really high. You don't think that that's precursor for maybe a heart attack or something? Like, no, apparently not. I'm just being paranoid. But I'm scared to go to him now, and I shouldn't feel like that. A family doctor that's been amazing since I started seeing him, and then all of a sudden he's getting close to retirement or something and just decides to F the dog kind of thing. Like, I don't think so. Like, I'm really nervous, and I feel like something's off, and I know my body, buddy, better than you do, and I will tell you that. You could study all you want in a textbook, but I still know that there's something off. I'm lethargic. I hate how I feel. I'm very resentful. I'm very envious. Yes, I know these are emotional issues, but it's manifesting something really, you know, like bad. And sure, it might be that I'm paranoid. And, or whatever, that I'm sick with a disease or an illness. But it definitely feels like I am because I'm so lethargic, I'm unmotivated again. And having weird unexplained health issues, even when I was eating well and exercising. My blood pressure was still high, that's unusual for me. Um, something is up. Another thing that's weird, and this has been happening for a while, but 
the doctor keeps saying it's probably something to do with my outer layer, just the outer layer of my body, my skin, no, no full out cause, he's been saying this forever, and basically the only thing he thinks that's going to treat it is steroids, and he knows I won't do that. So he keeps saying there's not really much we can do, I could send you to a dermatologist, but it's not going to do anything, and it has nothing to do with a dermatologist. I don't have a gallbladder for a reason. There is something seriously plaguing my liver. Last time I knew it, I had fatty, a fatty liver, and I'm sure I still do. And sure, that could probably cause itchiness, but oh my god, it's just so bad. Every time I shower, every time I sweat, whenever I use Dream Belly Butter, which is from Fairhaven Health, a review soon about that and a giveaway, so get in on that. It's for stretch marks to help reduce the visibility and to revitalize your skin and such. So I have a feeling that this itchiness has something to do with my liver or some sort of organ issue. It, I'm not a doctor, I don't claim to be one, but it's not as simple as skin because if it was, I imagine taking antihistamines and whatever would make it better. But my itching issue came back with a vengeance while I was pregnant and it hasn't left. So there's something going on. Being truly happy again, I just, I don't feel that a lot. Um, and obviously I'm not going to put that onus on other people as much as I would like to. I'm having a hard time making myself feel 100% happy. It's quite the journey. I gotta find the pattern or whatever keeps leading me back to this friggin' same spot over and over and then feeling worse and worse in my body, physically, emotionally. It just, it's draining. It is seriously draining. And it's, uh, it's, it's tearing me down. I've also been having random headaches at times. When I was pregnant, my sister had sent me like a little diary slash journal for me to write in and to tell honesty how I was feeling and stuff and I was going to write in it every six months. All the intentions were there. I started writing in it a few weeks after she was born and then I was going to write in it again at the six month mark and I've been procrastinating and haven't done it but then I decided if I start writing that isn't me. So I'm not going to let it go to waste, but I will write when I feel like it. I just don't think it's appropriate for me to write when I don't feel like it because then I'm not really doing it genuinely and it's not going to come from a true heart space like it would if I felt like writing. I feel like making videos. I used to write a lot when I was younger, but now I like to make videos and I've documented how I feel about Honesty, all her milestones, things that are happening. She's going to be able to look back on this stuff, positive, negative, she's going to know it all. So to me, to do double the work just doesn't really make sense. So if I really feel like saying something um, personally just to her, then I'll definitely do that. Like here, this is a channel for me to get out how I feel about her, my husband, my family, uh, the memories, the milestones. It's great. I love it. Um, it's just who I am and where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm not saying I never will write in it. I obviously will. I already did. I just didn't finish my my what I was writing. I was like halfway through writing her and I stopped because I got I had something going on at that point, or I was sidetracked, I don't know, but I haven't looked back where I left off. I might go in and fill out more and that sort of thing. And she's also got her baby book, uh, which has all those memories, which I still have to fill in a bunch of stuff since her uh, aunt, Welcome to the World Honesty Party. I haven't really filled anything out since then, so i got to go in and look at that and fill that out. So she's going to have that. Um, and then if she wants to know about my pregnancy and stuff I went through and stuff that she went through while, while I was pregnant, 
that's all there too. Got my pregnancy vlogs, post-pregnancy vlogs, so I don't really see a full reason to write to her other than if she likes uh, reading more than watching. So she'll still have stuff to read. There's no problem there. If there's a lesson I want her to learn in life, it's to be true to herself. If I were to start writing like every six months and I just wasn't feeling like writing, that's not me being true to myself. So why would I do that? I want to teach her to be authentic and be okay with what she feels is right and feels like doing. And you know, there's a balance of doing stuff for others and for yourself and whatever, but I don't know what she's going to be interested in yet. If I do see as she's getting older that she likes reading more than watching, then yeah, I'm going to obviously cater to her a little more in that aspect. But until then, this is what I do. Honesty comes first in my life. There is no doubt about that. I've canceled plans. I've not made plans. I've stayed home a lot. I might have a me day twice a month or something uh, now, but I've been trying to get myself out at least once a week. I mean, Matt and I will go do, we'll go out and eat. We'll bring honesty with us and every three weeks or something like that, we'll go out and we'll have a date night. But, uh, I don't know, I just felt guilty about that a lot. You know, seeing all my other friends with babies going out, I'm like, am I normal for wanting to stay home this much? And I just don't feel comfortable going out a lot anyways, especially in public places. Like, I'll go to the mall, but I like to like sit off in a corner where there's not people looking at me. I like to go out and eat, but I like to be in a booth so that you know, a lot of people aren't there just staring. And I know it sounds self-centered to think that people are staring, but sometimes they do. It's not just me being self-centered. I love going out to eat. And, uh, I love going to see movies so I can actually go see movies and not worry because it just is easy because it's dark and it's, you know, not like a club where it is dark, but People are there to pick up and check out people and it's just not my scene right now until I feel good about myself. I'm not gonna lie, I love the ego stroke when I get hit on. Nowadays I don't return the, the flirting, I actually just like it and kind of just, you know, <laughs> brush the person off, but it's just nice to know that someone else thinks I look good. I now see that's wanting validation from an outer source, but this is where I'm at. I'm trying to get past that and just go out and have fun for myself, but that's the thing about dancing. Dancing has always been like a way for me to feel vibrant, alive, sexy that's in there, and uh, I definitely like the attention that came from that because I got attention I imagine from it because people could feel that energy when I danced. They could see it. They, you know, they just, they, they were drawn to it. Now I don't have that same life force, that same feeling when I dance. So I don't know if it's necessarily about just the attention, but I just don't feel that about myself. As mothers, we tend to be conflicted. Not every one of us and whatever, but the majority of us are like torn between doing things for ourselves and doing things for the baby. And like when I'm not taking care of her, I still have a hard time not spending time with her because I'm still there. She's still near me. And so I tend to let things go to the side. But then there's times where like when I was feeling a lot of pressure to do those videos that I had put on myself to get uh, Mealtime Monday, weigh in Wednesday and Fitness Friday, which you guys know I haven't made in like a month or so. Um, I just, I'm still not ready to start making videos again, but uh, I, I can't justify being this selfish. Like, 
I would get frustrated when Matt wouldn't be spending time with her. So I'd be frustrated at him, but at the same time, if she fussed and wanted to be paid attention to, I would sometimes get frustrated with her. I wouldn't get angry, I wouldn't say anything, but I just, blood was boiling and it wasn't, I had to realize that it wasn't because I was angry that she was upset. I was upset with myself because I was being self-absorbed and uh, selfish. Wasn't putting my child first. That was what was in my heart, but at the same time I didn't want to disappoint my viewers, didn't want to disappoint myself because I had set my goals to making sure I get those videos edited and photos edited for photo shoots and I just, it was all too much. And so that's why I let it go. I chose honesty. Honesty is my world. And the way to get past that frustration is to not do those things as much and to work on myself not think that there's a problem with her. With Matt, in all honesty, he thinks that, this is the thing, he thinks that he's frustrated with her because she is always needing his attention or she needs something usually either to be put to bed, changed, fed, she requires attention and time, and for his almost his whole um, paternity leave or parental leave, he's wanted to play games. And when she takes him out of that element, he starts feeling resentful. And I've, I've, I've observed this, and I've observed it in myself, and I don't have nearly as much frustration and resentment towards honesty as he does, but I was able to see it because I felt it. And I asked him, I said, do you realize that the only reason why you're frustrated with her or you resent her is because you're choosing to prioritize something over her. You're choosing something that benefits you over her. And that's where the problem lies. At least for us. I don't know about anyone else, but I mean, it makes sense to me. If you're going to prioritize something and then you're upset that you can't do that thing because the child is upset or they need something, well, wouldn't it make sense? You don't want to stop doing things for yourself. You don't want to stop caring for yourself and just got to find a balance. And that's what I had to do and I'm starting to do trying to get there. I'm still making these updates. That's a good start. And still f got out my month six update. Might have taken forever and it's in a bunch of different parts, but this one probably will be too, but I just can't spend most of my days editing photos and videos. I want to be there for my daughter. I want to be 100% present and part of my stress was that I was doing these videos not necessarily putting them before her, but it was unnecessary pressure. It didn't need to be there. And so if I start up videos again, it's going to be, I'm going to have to find a way to make the video short, concise to the point, minimal, get them edited when I have, get them edited when I have the time when Matt gets home from work and on weekends, and that'll be it. I just I can't feel that way anymore. It's not her fault. She needs me. She needs my love. She needs my attention. Editing videos doesn't need me. The people out there that need to find themselves as well, like I've been trying to do, don't need me to tell them how to find themselves. I might be able to inspire and kind of make something click with them, but I have to do me. I have to get well and feel good about myself and get rid of these health issues and eat better and exercise and be there for honesty. Like, that's why I haven't even been doing most of my stuff. I need to be there for my daughter, making her purees, making her food. Um, 
but I'm trying to find a balance. I had a me day today, so that was really good. That was my most important lesson that I learned in month seven. And I hope that if you're feeling any sort of resentment or any issues like that, you come to terms with it and you see it for what it is. That it's not your baby. There's nothing wrong with them. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with you and there's nothing wrong with me. Life is a learning process and so is motherhood and fatherhood for Matt and hopefully once going back to work he'll realize that he had it really good being around Honesty and I and appreciate it more. Who knows, maybe that's wishful thinking but uh, yeah so there's a lot of resentment there from me towards Matt. Um, I gotta work on that as well. But I haven't been out to. It's uh, still there. I mean, even though I'm taking care of her five days a week, um, two of those days, all day, all night, shouldn't mean that if he's home on this leave, that he shouldn't be spending time with honesty during that time. Just like when he's taking care of her on the two weekend days and three evenings of the week, I still spend time with her during that time. We eat together. Um, I don't know, just... I don't know. Any dads watching this, did you have any issues like that when your kids were born? Did you feel resentful that they were taking time away from the things you really like to do? Did you push them away like your wife, your kid, or kids? Give me some feedback, I'd really like to know. Another thing that I've been struggling with lately is my faith. Um, I've pretty much lost all faith in God. If I had to guess, we all go through that, we all question our faith. and. I've been questioning my faith on and off since, you know, the day I lost my grandfather when I was seven years old to cancer. And then a few months later in the same year, I lose my dad to a car accident. And I just said, wow, this is so much to deal with. If there's a God, why would he do this? And, uh, you know, then you come to realize, okay, well, maybe he's not doing it. It's us. And, but an all-powerful, almighty God, like the Bible describes, should be able to help guide us more than he does. If I had a choice in learning a lesson in an easier way, as opposed to a more difficult, violent sort of way, I think I would choose the easier way. I'm not saying I'd choose the easier path. That's not what I mean. I just mean all this shit that's happening out there, like these bombings, these airplane crashes, the terrorism, the riots, the freaking earthquake, the wars. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a lot. And as we know, we go through those wars in our own heads sometimes and you know, the path to peace lies in peace with each individual, but when you pray for other people to be healed and to be well from all these cancers and all these diseases, and then you just see them die right in front of your friggin' eyes, and then I'm supposed to believe that that was supposed to happen, that, you know, uh, this God has no power over us at all. We have to make our own paths. I was actually watching this video and this guy said that he feels like Buddhism is where it's at for him and I felt that too. I don't necessarily believe fully in everything but I believe in a lot of the concepts and principles of Buddhism. And I just, I've become at peace with the death of my grandfather and my father and death in general, but I'm scared to, to death of dying. And I just feel like if there were a God, why would we fear death? Why would we fear anything? Why would the world be as corrupt and crappy as it is? I can't fathom that 
in my own brain because I'm not 100% perfect and, and, and happy and healthy that I'm part of the reason the world is going to shit. I mean, well, obviously we all are part of the reason why it's good and part of the reason why it's bad as a collective source, but why? I don't know. Anyway, I've just been struggling with that. I don't know what to believe in anymore, and I just feel lost in that facet. But that doesn't mean I'm trying to attract a bunch of people that are against religion, and I'm not trying to attract people that are religious to get me to go back into it. I'm just stating how I feel, and I will find my own path when the time comes. Right now, this is my path. Right now, I'm a non-believer. I said it. <laughs> That's all I have for an update this week. I really appreciate you if you stayed with me through this whole video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, thumbs up this video, comment below, and share it with your friends and family if you think they might benefit from it. I hope you have a wonderful day or a wonderful evening wherever you are. Namaste.